So this video covers everything you need to know about token accounts on Solana, including what are token accounts and associated token accounts, why Solana stores different types of tokens in different accounts, how to see your token accounts in Solana Explorer, what are token mints, and how to know if a token mint is actually the token you think it is. How to find the token address for a Solana wallet and mint. We'll have five different ways for Rust, for the command line, for JavaScript and TypeScript that we go through at the end of this. Everything's timestamped below, so you can jump straight to the sections you're interested in, but otherwise, let's go. So here I am in my browser, and I'm going to use Phantom in this demo, but you can use Soulflare or any other popular Solana wallet. So we'll just click Phantom, and we're gonna hit this button just to keep it at the side, which will just be a little bit more convenient for this video. So you can see my different token balances inside my wallet, and you can see your token balances inside your wallet. I have some amount of Sol, but I don't really care about Sol right now. Sol is the native token of Solana. It's built into Solana. It's used to do boring things like pay transaction fees. The things that are really interesting on Solana are called SPL tokens. And that's anything that people make on the platform. So I've got some PayPal USD, some USDC, and some Bonk. In fact, 89 PayPal USD, 29 USDC, and 425,000 Bonk which is $8.82. If I go to the very top of my Solana wallet, I can copy my wallet address. Click that little button there to copy it. And if I go and visit explorer.solana.com and I paste in that wallet address, you will see a whole bunch of information about my wallet, like all the recent transactions and the sole balance. But the thing I really care about is tokens, and that's SPL tokens. People use tokens and SPL tokens interchangeably because SPL tokens are really all the most interesting tokens. Everything other than Sol. So let's click tokens, and I'm going to turn on the detail view, and you can see all the different tokens in my account, including a bunch of really boring ones. But the only things I really care about are USDC, Bonk, and PYUSD right now. So I'm going to do a little bit of magic and just focus on those. So USDC I have, in fact, 29 USDC, and that exactly matches what I can see in Phantom. And I have 89 PayPal USD, and that also matches what I can see in Phantom, and indeed I have 425,000 bonk, and you'll see Phantom shows the same thing. So what I'm looking at are the associated token accounts for my wallet. An associated token account is a token account for a specific token for a specific wallet. Now, if you're used to older blockchains, you might be thinking, why does Solana put all this different information into different accounts? And there's a really simple reason for that. It makes Solana fast. Say somebody's sending me some PayPal USD. Well, I need to increment my balance of PayPal USD. And if I'm sending some USDC to somebody else at the same time, I need to decrement that account. By storing different information in different accounts, Solana can increment my PayPal USD account and decrement my USDC account at the same time. Those transactions don't have to wait for each other to finish before doing their work. And that's one of the reasons why Solana is fast. So each of these associated token accounts has a mint address. What is a mint address? You probably realize that a mint address is what defines a token on Solana. So I have some bonk here and I can open up the bonk mint address. And you'll see it displays all the transactions that have ever been made with Bonk and all the amount of Bonk that's ever been made. A token mint is really the factory that makes the tokens, like a mint for US dollars or British pounds or whatever else in the real world. One of the things that's important to know is, how do you know if this token mint is actually the real one? Because anyone can make a token on Solana, anyone can call that token Bonk, and anyone can give it this logo. Well, Solana Explorer is actually pretty good. If you get a less popular token, like Founders with Amps, it actually shows a warning saying, hey, token names and logos are not unique. And that's super important. Good wallets and Explorer tools and other blockchain tools will show a warning beside anything that's below a certain market cap saying, hey, you should just double check this address. How do you double check an address? How do you know if a new token is actually the real one when other people are going around making similar looking tokens. The answer is you go to the source for whoever made that token. So Bonk, the token account is D-E-Z, Z-X-A-Z. And if I go to the actual Bonk official 
X account, you can see the token ID is DZ, ZXAZ. Excellent. And the same thing with USDC. USDC is made by a company called Circle. And if you go and visit the Circle website, it says USDC on Solana is native to Solana Explorer and can be found at this contract address, which you can see it's a little bit small there, but actually links straight out to Solana Explorer. That's that EPJF address. And that's the same one you'll see in my list of tokens. If I click on USDC there, it's EPJF, it's the same address. Likewise for PYUSD, if I scroll down a little bit on the PayPal website, I will see that here's the address for Solana. It's 2B1K. So if I go back to my list of associated token accounts and I click on the mint address for PYUSD, you can see it is indeed 2B1K. Again, Explorer does actually have nice warnings built into it already for like low cap tokens. But if there's a new token out, you should always check with the official sources what the token mint address is. So now we know what associated token accounts are when we make our own Solana programs. How can we calculate the associated token account address for a particular token for a particular wallet? Well, we've got five different ways and let's go through them now. So here we are in our command line and the first way we're going to go and find the associated token account for a given wallet with a given token mint is use the SPL token command. So I'll just make sure that's installed. Uh, good. And I'm going to be using my own wallet address. You can and you can and probably should substitute in your wallet address. And the token I'm going to use is the USDC token, which is there. Oops. And is that correct? Yeah, there we go. Just splitting this over multiple commands for a little bit more readability. I'm going to want the verbose option. And I'm going to say the URL is mainnet beta, which is Solana mainnet. Give it a moment. And there you can see the associated token account address is that 4MD address. If we want to send tokens to my USDC wallet, or if someone wants to look at the balance of my USDC wallet, there is the account for you. So the next way we can look up an associated token account address is using curl. Now curl comes pre-installed in most Linux machines. So if you run curl-v, you can see it's installed. And I'm gonna make a bash script to actually do the curl. So get associated token account dot bash. And my editor pops up. Now, rather than having you watch me type this, I am gonna do a little bit of a cut and paste, but it's pretty simple. We just set our wallet address, which uh, is my own wallet, and you should use your wallet. My token mint, which is, this is the USDC token mint we saw before. And we're gonna run curl. We're gonna run a post request to api.mainnetbeta.solana.com. And we're gonna send it some JSON. This is a JSON RPC request, which is how Solana clients communicate with RPCs. We're gonna send the output of that to Q, which is gonna format the JSON for us nicely. And then we're gonna print a nice message to let us know that everything went okay. So I've saved that and I can run that bash script just by going bash, get associated token account dot bash, give it a moment and it's finished. It actually went really quickly. Um, so there you can see the raw response from the Solana RPC. And there's a big list of accounts. And the first one, uh, you can see there is that 4MD address again, which is our associated token account for this token for my wallet. The next way we can go and check for an associated token account address is using Solana Kit. If you don't know Solana Kit, it's the brand new way of using Solana in TypeScript and JavaScript. It's going to be Pretty soon the default way to do anything with Solana involving JavaScript and TypeScript. It uses the inbuilt features of Node and modern web browsers like Web Crypto and BigInt to do a lot of the things that old Web3.js needed extra dependencies for. So it's a lot smaller, it's a lot faster, and it's also a lot simpler. So I'm going to make a, a new project. Um, I will call it Get Associated Token account Solana kit and I will change into that directory which I'll just do a copy and paste there we go 
Um, I'm just going to do an npm init dash y, which creates an empty npm package.json, just with some default values. And then I'm going to add a couple of packages that we want, specifically Solana Kit and the Solana Kit support for the token program. Give it a moment and there we go, it's installed. So I'm going to make a TypeScript file. Oh, you know what? I also want npm i es run. If you don't know what es run is, it's a really fast way to run TypeScript. You don't need any tsconfig.json or anything else. You don't need any special values to use await at the top level. It just works. So let's make a TypeScript file. Edit get associated token account dot ts this time. And again, I'm not going to make you watch me type because I am not the best timest in the world and uh, it's embarrassing for you to watch me type. So what I am going to do is show you how this program works. I'm going to pop in my wallet address and the mint address, which is our USDC mint, as we saw earlier. And I'll go through this. So we just import address from Solana Kit. Um, Solana Kit's pretty smart. It actually uses the term address rather than using pub key, uh, which Web3.js, sometimes they were pub keys, sometimes they weren't pub keys. These associated token account addresses, they're not pub keys, they're just addresses. Um, so it's a little bit neater than where 3 js used to be. So we set our wallet, we set our mint, and we set where the token program is. So that can be the older token program, which is called token keg something or other, or the newer token program, which is called tokens something or other. And all we use to get our associated token account address is the command, or the, sorry, the function, find associated token PDA. We mentioned the mint, the owner, and the token program, the older or the newer token program and we'll get our result. It'll actually be an array of items. We'll get the associated token account address and a bump. And we can talk about bumps another time. Um, and yeah, I'll add a little console log message just to know that everything went okay. Save that file. And if I go mpx es run get associated token account.ts, there we go, 4md31b. It's the same token account address that we got the last two times. So, what next? Oh, we should probably show you how to do it with Web3.js. There's a lot of existing Solana programs that use Web3.js, so let's do that. Now we're going to make a new directory called get associated token account Web3.js, or maybe Solana Web3.js, because there's a different Web3.js out there. And if we cd into that directory we just made, and we do npm init-y to create an empty npm project, Let's add some dependencies. Firstly, we want Web3.js. And then we'll go and create our program. So let's call it get associated token account.ts. So just like before, I'm not going to have you watch me type because it's embarrassing, but it's pretty simple. We're just going to pop in our own wallet address. There we go. And our token mint, which is this is the USDC mint. So if you want to see my USDC associated token account address, this is how to do it. We also pop in the program. This is the older token program called token keg. If you want to use token extensions, look up the token extensions account address. Now it also wants us to specify the address of the associated token program ID, which is already in there for you, or you can look it up on your own. It's in the Solana documentation. The function to do this is actually pretty simple. In fact, it's a method of public key. It's called find program address sync. And again, you just specify the wallet, token program and the mint you're interested in as well as the associated token program ID and I throw in at the end here just a little log message we'll take that result which is the first of two items we also get a bump we'll talk about bumps at a different time and we'll log that address and show it as base 58 which is a nice way to show Solana addresses so we've done with that let's go run it let's also add it as well that's npm i es run And now let's go and edit our program. So it's actually pretty simple. And I'm, again, I'm not going to type this out for you because that's boring. I'm just specifying my own wallet address, the USDC Mint that we discovered earlier, and a couple of these well-known program addresses. So the token program itself. Again, there's also a newer token program called Token Extensions, which you might want to use for some newer tokens. 
and the address is the associated token program account as well, which takes care of doing things like initializing new associated token accounts. So the actual method to go and find an associated token account is called public key dot find program address sync. It's like a static method off public key. And you just mention the wallet, the mint, the token program ID, and the associated token program ID. You'll get a result with two items. The first one is the one you care about, which is the associated token account address. I'll throw a little log message on the end there. And when I'm logging out the address, I'll convert it to base 58 so it looks nicer. So it looks like the same kind of address as you would see in Solana Explorer. If I go and run that program with npx es run, get associated token account dot ts, done. It's the same address for md31b, etc. So finally, for the Rust stations of the audience, uh, we're going to go and get an associated token account using Rust. So let's make a new project with cargo new, and we'll call it get associated token address Rust. That sounds great. And let's CD into it, get associated token account address Rust. There we go. And let's add a couple of dependencies. Um, first thing we'll need is the Solana SDK. The next thing is the associated token account program. So let's add that. Done. And then if we open our new project and we go into source main.rs, we can start hacking. So I'll get rid of Cursor's AI suggestions and I will firstly do a few use statements. We want pub key, we want get associated token account, get associated token address, and we want from string. Uh, in our main function, again, I'm not going to type just because I think that's pretty boring for you. I'm going to uh, paste out what we're going to do. So the wallet will be your own wallet. The mint will be the USDC mint we saw before. And all you have to do is run the get associated token address function um, and mention the wallet and the mint. Afterwards, I'll just add a little happy log message that um, uh, like prints out the associated token address. So to run our program, let me go back here and we just go cargo run. It's going to compile and then run our program. Excellent. So there's all five ways of getting an associated token account address on Solana. So if you need to send somebody some tokens, you know where you need to send them to. If you want to look at the balance, you know where to look up that balance from. I hope that was useful and I'll see you in the next guy.